That's what I'm talking about, man. You know we live in the building, Fusion Radio, with your boy Brown Simpson and Keith, man. You know we keep the bangers going, we keep the people coming, man. And we always love coming in here because it's like every weekend we get a chance to see these amazing artists and come in and talk about their stories and what they got going on. So today we got a female artist in the building, man. She's been in the game a little minute. You know she's been doing her thing, so she got a chance to come in and chop it up with us. You feel me? I'm excited. This is my first time meeting her. You feel me? So we gonna have a good time today, man. So who I'm introducing today, my girl Jatana, man. How you doing today? I am great. How about you? I'm doing awesome, man. I got a chance to come in here and meet y'all great people today, man. So it's always great. So first, I want to start off with this name. You feel me? So for the people that's probably not familiar with you and familiar with your movement, how'd you end up coming up with your stage name? Actually, my stage name is actually my name. It's just my middle name. I just wanted to keep it original. I always want to be myself. So just kept it as my name. Jatana. That's what I'm talking about, man. So how long have you actually been making music and stuff like that? <laughs> to be honest, I've been rapping since Criss Cross Jump Jump. That's how long I've been rapping. Seriously, I'm 34 years old. All I know is music. I'm, I come from a family of musicians and singers. Um, my dad's family uh, side of the family, they're rappers. My mom's side is singers. So I got it both, honestly. Um, and as I just got older, I perfected my craft. Really don't think nobody messing with me, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you. That's how you supposed to feel. You supposed to have that confidence in yourself, cause like I be telling my people, like if you don't have that confidence in yourself, how will somebody else have that confidence exactly. in you? Exactly. If you don't believe in yourself, they won't believe in you. That's you what I'm. Keep saying. foot on next. For sure, for sure. So when you was growing up, I know you said on your dad's side, you feel me, they was more rapping and stuff like that, but on your mom's side, they was more doing singing. So like, I know you rock with both, but like, what really stood out to you? First, though, like, the, was it the rapping or was it the thing? Honestly, it was the rapping. Um, I actually started off as a gospel rapper. Um, mm. Yeah, I started off as a gospel rapper because I come from a family of uh, Christians. They're very religious people. So just coming out with secular rap, they want too much into it. it has to be respectful of my family. So uh, I jumped into rapping, uh, Christian rap. Um, I did that for a couple of years um, with Pastor Phil at uh, Londale Christian um, Church. Um, they had a, a hip-hop church every first and second Saturday, um, and I was involved in that. And then as I got older, it was like, you know, not saying I don't want to be into the, you know, spiritual realm, but it was like, mm, I got to get to this right here because I love Twister. I love Crucial Conflict. I love... Uh, look him. I love fabulous. So it's like, I'm gonna just be myself. I gotta, I gotta rap. Even though it's nothing wrong with it, but see, you just put me on to something that I ain't never heard about. You said uh, Christian rapping. Well, I heard of Christian rapping, but you said on um, like rapping in church and like. So how did they necessarily infuse like rap music in the church though? Because I never really seen that though. Um, to be honest with you, because the neighborhoods that we're living in, we hear all this. Sexy Red, Chief Keith, and all this. But you have kids out here that are living in households with people that just really ain't letting them listen to that type of music or even, you know, sing it. So um, by me being growing up in church, the church looked at it like this. Like, this is what has our youth right now. Let's just take that, that same attitude and we just going to replace those words with something, you know, for the sake of Jesus, you know, to give him praise. I did that. It wasn't that I didn't want to praise God. It was just like, I like to rap and I just want to be myself. This is how I express myself. Um, so I had to take it another step. I had to step aside from that and I just kept perfecting my craft. That's what's up. So, man, look, in the building, man, you definitely, man, spitting that stuff, man. And I know people <laughs> want to definitely hear some music, man, and definitely. everything. And so, uh, man, we got people in the studio and, uh, man, I definitely want to share some of your dope music with them. So, Talk to me about the inspiration behind this single, Hellstar. Honestly, I'm 290 crazy. Oh, Born and raised minute, on the west minute, side. Wait a minute. The only reason why I stop you is, you know, lately we've been getting a lot of 290 interviews. As you should. And I stop you because, Caesar. Y'all didn't know it, but I was born and raised on the West Side. First 10 years of my life. See? Kansas City in Ohio. And it's, it's something about neighborhood. these... 290 interviews. I, I try to shy away from because I recognize we are on the south side. I try to shy away from it. Yeah. But, you know, it's something special about these interviews from 290. First of all, we got our own roller coaster. Yeah. I tell everybody we got our own roller coaster over there by Ida B. Wells. Yeah. Over there, you know, you sizzle on down to 290. 
and all that stuff. And yes. um, Uncle Remus is a whole bunch of other places. Yeah. And so when you said you was from 290, which I knew it, I could tell. 290 got a certain swagger to it. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I say foot on necks all the See, time. See, look at that. Yeah. Plus, we got our own terminology. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. 290 in the bill. I almost feel like I want to do like an education on that. Like when we come back, it's some terminology that they use <laughs> out west. <laughs> what? Terminology 101. Yeah. We yeah. don't do that. You definitely gonna know a West Side right. when you see him. Hellstar. Yeah. Talk to us about the inspiration behind that. And then when we come back, we're gonna do uh terminology one on one on the West Side. West Side terminology. Gotcha. When we come back. I like that. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, so talk to us about this Hellstar. So actually Hellstar, it was just me riding down two ninety, honestly. One day feeling good. I didn't hit the wood. I didn't I didn't hit the Don Julio, see, and I'm see, just feeling myself. And I'm see, like, hey, see, this beat caught my attention. I just got to writing, and it was a hit. See? Now, we're going to get into the song, but I'm going to do one more, as they say in radio, uh, pre-sale. All right. So my pre-sale is, I've got, I saw something trending for 290 that wasn't good. Uh, I feel like being a 290 representative, I got to dispel this and say that this person does not represent 290. They actions and what they did does not represent 290. Find out what that is when we come back. Uh, I'm going to talk about that after the, the, the terminology uh, for the West Side at a second bit. Right. It's Freezer Radio. So I told y'all that uh, while that song was playing, Hell Star, that when we came back, we just going to get some West Side terminology. And mm -hmm. I'm going to tell y'all this story that I got to stick up for the West Side because I just thought that this was just totally stupid what this person did. And uh, I know somebody out there saying, see, that's the West Side, folks. That's something West Side. So I'm going to talk about that in a second. Give us some West Side terms that we should know. Mm -hmm. Give us some West Side terms. Mm -hmm. Some ones, maybe some ones every day that you use. Give, give us some every day, you know what I'm saying? Some simple form to follow. And then if you could <laughs> give us a definition of what, what it means. Because you got to keep in mind, mm. we, we don't just have Chicago listening. We got other people that's being educated at the same token. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think we too much got terminology that nobody using. Unless we saying like, Lord, <laughs> BD, uh, uh, I mean, King David, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> But I don't think I use any other words that I've never heard nobody using. Okay. I, I think that only thing that person really be knowing that I'm from out west is the this little little voice that I have. Okay. The the strength of this voice. Okay. They 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 know that I don't play and I don't take. All right. Yeah, All right. Know you know that's, that's you, you, you know what I love is. And I don't know if people are going to go back to this and go say that radio show host is a fool. <laughs> you know what I love is how you just radio edit to yourself. You kept in mind that we are on a platform that we cannot curse. I, I, I applaud you for that. Give you a round of applause. I'm a mommy, too. That's that, that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that mommy instinct. Yeah, that's that mommy instinct, too. But, yeah, definitely. I don't think that um, I was doing too much that nobody else doing. I just think that it's just how we do it. Yeah. 
it's I mean you could you could give somebody yeah, the game free. It's what you do with it. All right, all right. So when we get to that story of something that I saw trending online that uh I kind of just defend my two ninety people. All right, so this is the story straight to the point. There was a man riding his bicycle on 290 on Expressway in traffic. Mm. And um, it's all over social media. It's on YouTube. It's everywhere. And, um, you know, when I saw it, I said, see, some people low-key, I have to catch them. Well, they be like, them folks from 290, y'all got some clucks over there. They be saying terms like that. And I was sitting there saying to myself, see, they're going to associate this guy riding on 290 with the whole West Side. No. And all that stuff. So, uh, saw that, of course, uh, the police were on the expressway. They blocked traffic. And they literally, I think they was practicing for protecting Caleb Williams, uh, the the Bears' new quarterback. They tackled the man and the bicycle at the same time on 290. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Wow. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. They tackled the man and everything, took him into custody and all that stuff. And uh, eventually, of course, traffic began to start moving again. Right. Well, only thing I, I defend him and say is at least he was getting where he had to go Ew, by any means necessary. <laughs> it was 290 in that bike. That's what he did. So, hey, I, I promise you, this, that's just like people taking raggedy cars getting it on the expressway. He had to go somewhere. <laughs> Can't blame him for that. Yeah, but you know, folks, it's something else, man, when it comes to us at 290. Yeah. It's like you would think, honestly, uh, that from another city standpoint, that the west side, the south side, over east, up north, you think those was like different cities. Yeah, you would. No, it's just real. how people go about things. So they they put us into these categories. But it's Chicago, nigga. Like, for real. I don't be wanting to do it like that. But, like, come on, man. We all know what's going on. See, like, how, nowadays they look at y'all like out west. It's mm-hmm. like out west Illinois. Like, y'all, y'all yeah, own whole other city. We in our like, own little bubble. I'll give us that. I'll say that. West side the best side, hands down. That's just me. But I love my city. Oh, no, for sure. But it, it's, it feel like that, though. Like, especially when you not from out west and you go out <laughs> west, though. Like, for example, me being from <laughs> over east. Me being from over east, I go out west. It's like y'all be having a ball over there. Like everybody outside on every block doing what they doing. You feel me? Everything cool. You can't do that over east. That's why, like, for example, like we'll look at y'all and be like, man, it's totally different out here than it is where we come from. You feel me? So I'm assuming you seen that butt naked drive campaign that's going on. 290, got it. We really do. It's like we want to turn up, have fun, look good, make money. That's it. That's all we want to do. When the extra <laughs> stuff come in, and they 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 made that drama. But we 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 don't be on all that. We really just like looking good and getting some money. For sure, for sure, that's we definitely it. like that. Though. That's that's it. I I I'm always right where I'm from. I promise you, I do shows everywhere. When I get on that stage, first thing I'm saying is 290. I don't care if it was just one person from 290 there. I'm repping where I'm from <laughs> proudly. Come on. Love it. It's a 290 campaign. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to get a shirt and say that. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds real good. So, back to the music, though. So, like, what certain things that we could be expecting from you coming out as far as, like, especially, like, with it being the summertime and stuff like that, and there's a lot going on out here? Oh, well, I got a juice joint that's going to drop. Mm. Like, real, <clears throat> I know we can't curse. Yeah. Do your radio in. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm going to just say that. But, yeah, I, I, um, I, I, I love the rap, so I have a variety of music. But right now, because what's really trending, women just want to have fun. And Sexy Red made it where we just want to be outside twerking, F5 baby daddies, and everything else. So I had to jump on that bandwagon. So my juke joint will be dropping probably tomorrow. But it'll be out before the weekend's out. What's the name of it? See Nasty. See Nasty. Yeah, it's different for me because all my music really just, I say it's based on my life, different experiences, um, and just real heart music. Now I'm like, you know what? It's time to turn up. Let me show y'all something else because I could do everything. (laughs) Yeah.
Any shows, anything? Yeah, I'm actually, me and C is actually about to go to Atlanta from um, June 14th to 17th for the Chicago Invades Atlanta. So we had a, a lot of shows, a lot of things going on in motion. Ain't no sitting down. This gonna be one busy summer. You ain't know my name now, definitely about to know it. And this it's one thing that I want to build down on that I heard you saying stuff like that, but you didn't really put no emphasis on it, so I'm gonna bring it up. I heard you bring up like that you was a mother and stuff like that. So yes. what I wanted to ask you was like, how do you necessarily juggle being a mother and an artist at the same time? Because it's a lot that comes with being a mother and it's definitely a lot that comes with being an artist. So like, how do you go about your daily routine as far as like juggling both? Okay, to be honest with you, um, again, I've been rapping for a long time. Um, I actually took a break from the music so I could focus on being a mother so that my kids, when they got older, I'd be able to move, maneuver and move around how I wanted to without feeling guilty, like, oh, I'm not spending time with my kids. My oldest daughter just graduated from high school last week. She's 18 mm -hmm. years old, shout out Kamaya. Then I got three younger daughters and a son. They are ages 13 to age six. But they at ages where they appreciate their mama doing music. Like my little nephew, he's two years old. He wake up every day like, I want to hear your song. Play your song for me. <laughs> Shout out Zaire. But it's like, I, I I won't say that it's necessarily hard juggling the both of them. Both of them are important because one is my dream and the other is my children, which I want them to be better than I ever been. But I also want them to know just because you have things going on in your life doesn't mean that your dreams stop. Mm. So, yeah, I think that I, I found the perfect time and right now to get back into the music field. Because, again, my kids are older. They love my music. This is what I love to do, and I'm going to do it. Nah, see, I only ask that because, like, I be talking to my people and stuff like that. And a lot of times, you know, it come, just come up and people be kind of like, man, when you going to have a kid or you be thinking about having a kid or do you even want a kid? I be like, yeah, I want one, but not necessarily right now because yeah. I don't want it to take away with away from the dream you feel me yes because i'm looking at it like whenever i do have a kid i know certain things gonna have to stop because yes. i got this kid so i don't want to put myself in a situation where i'm still young now i got this kid i gotta think about now i can't do my dream with the music and move right. i want to move that's why i asked that but question i honestly say it's about the timing though mm. also about support if you got people around you that really believe in you and they see that you this is something that you really want they gonna step with you it's a team. It's a team effort. Anybody that's in my circle right now, trust me, it's because we a team. If you any anything that's gonna distract me or take me away from what I really want to do in life, you gotta go. For sure, the right <laughs> one. So yeah. like, as far as like being in the studio and like what type of atmosphere you need to make the best music possible, like take me through a studio session with you. Like, what should I expect trying to go in the studio and work? I ain't gonna lie. Most of the time when I go to the studio, I'm solo. I do my best work solo. I'm my, I'm my best critique. Again, it's just like this. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. You got to really be confident when you go up in there. You, you, when you step on the stage, even when you in the studio, you really got to give that your all. And so but really before I go to the studio, when I'm writing, I'm at home, I voice memo everything that I do. I got to hear it back. Let me see, oh, I could I could change this up. This needs to sound different. I need to put more emphasis on this. Uh, this, this I don't, they, they not gonna feel this if I'm not saying it this way. So when I go in the studio, I'm just, it's just me and the mic. That's my only, me and the mic. That's what's up, man. Let's talk about accomplishments so far in that career that you like super proud of. You wanna yeah. stick your chest out and say, yes. I did that. Yeah. Yes, so <laughs> one thing I will say that I'm real proud of, my EP came out in March. That was my first ever. Even though I've been rapping for so long, again, so many obstacles and things happened in life, it just distracted me and threw me off. So when I I, I really sat down and was like, this is what I'm gonna do. This this what, I'm not, nothing else is taken away from my dreams. I put that EP out. And what's it's the name of the EP? Queen shit. Ooh. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, it's queen shit. So, so take us through the process of putting it together uh, and some things that uh, we should uh, take away from it. To be honest with you, it's hit after hit after hit. When you turn that EP on, you ain't gonna turn it off. You ain't uh -huh. skipping through nothing. Everything that I said is 100% felt, 100% real, 100% me. 
So I say it's queen shit. I am a queen. All and right. I am the shit. All right, all right, all right. And we can check it out where? You can get, check it out on all platforms, streaming everywhere. Apple Music. Um, you can go on, check me out on my Facebook page. Um, it's underscore J-O-T-A-N underscore underscore. That's also my Instagram name. Or most people can find me as Just Queen C. That's my real Facebook page. But just check me out. You won't be disappointed. All right, so I'm sitting here, and I love how you just exude yourself <laughs> like that and everything. Um, take me through what it's like to be in the presence of you when you perform. You mentioned June 14th, you and uh, our bro, uh, Caesar, who will be coming up in a second. Got a show y'all doing together. Uh, take us through, man, what is it like to be in the presence of you? What's some things you do that, that you, you leave and you say, man, she did that? Honestly, because most times when I'm going to shows, Again, because I haven't been out, you know, not saying out, but I haven't been doing anything as of lately. So when I did jump back into it, when people see me, they're not expecting the voice that I got. They just see a cute girl walking past. She probably with another rapper. And when I jump on that stage and they hear the strength of this voice and what I'm saying out of my mouth, they be in shock. They be like, dang. That make me smile. Because I could walk in with one or two fans. When I walk out, I'm leaving with the whole crowd. It made me feel real good. Because I know, again, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Nothing's stopping me from doing it. So you got any previous music? Like, this is part of the show where we give homework assignments. Homework assignments meaning we build on what you talked about here. And now, once we get done with the interview, the next step is for the listener and the viewer is to go, number one, check out your, your EP. Number two is to check out some previous music and just really get more acclimated with you. Mm -hmm. So what's some previous music that you released that you like, man, you need to check for that? So um, I used to, well, I still do. Um, I collaborate with my best friend a lot. His name's uh, Kenny Matt 290. Um, 290 so, stick together. Yeah, so as always, that's been my best friend for 17 years. We in this. It don't matter. We like this. Um, but uh, we got a song that's on YouTube. Um, I really feel like a lot of people should listen to it um, because it's kind of, you know, when that Glorilla and Moneybag Yo came out? Right. Our song is just that. Ours That's came out way before theirs. So when I seen them pop out with that, I'm like, hold on now. Same idea, same concept. But I really just need my fans to go Again, go J O T A N. Type that in on YouTube. You're gonna see a lot of music from me. A, a lot of different things. Heart music. Uh, how can I say? I don't want to say drill music, cause I won't consider myself a drill artist. I do my thing, but I ain't no drill artist. But yeah, just check me out. You won't be disappointed. You won't mess with me real hard. <laughs> Well, can I say it was an absolute pleasure spending this time with you, acting a little you. goofy and silly during the interview? Thank you. Yeah, I can, <laughs> definitely. Uh, talk out 290-ish. <laughs> yes, always. <laughs> Let them know. 290, stand up. <laughs> All right, man, we back in a second with more dope guests, man. It's Fusion Radio. It's Brian Stinson and it's Keys. <laughs> 